Welcome back to the Privacy Wayfinder. I'm super excited to be making another video. It's been a long time, had many life changes, um, moved to a different state, bought a new house, we're expecting another child, there's a ton going on. So please bear with me as we kind of go through life and hopefully I can begin to push out more videos as things stabilize. But next month will be my one and a half year I guess you could call it anniversary of using Graphene OS. So this month is 17 months. So we're kind of close. So this will be my 17 month update and maybe I can do an official one and a half year update next month. Uh, but what I want to do is just go through the changes that I made with my phone as far as the apps and different profiles that I use. So right off the bat, one of the biggest change that I made was I removed the SIM card from this Graphene OS device and put it into my iPhone, which is this device that I'm filming with. But I have an iPhone 11, had it for a while, and I moved my SIM card back into my iPhone because when we moved state, I also started an, a new side hustle that requires me to make a lot of phone calls, send a lot of texts. And what I realized was that many of the clients that I work with have iPhone. So all of the texts that I was sending with my Graphene OS device was through SMS and I didn't like that. Um, yes, I could have asked all of my clients to uh, move to Signal, but these are people I interact just for work. I'm not gonna go up to someone who I talk to maybe once or twice a year and say, hey, move to Signal just for me. Um, that's not gonna happen and I'm not gonna tell 50 people to do that. So I felt the easiest move was to move my SIM card over back to my iPhone and I would say it's crazy. 95% of all of my messages are now iMessages. Yes, not the greatest. They're not signal messages, um, but they are much better than SMS. So my plan is to get another SIM card for my Graphene OS device and to never share that number. So I'm gonna try to purchase that number as anonymous as I can. And then that number will literally just be used for data and maybe emergency phone calls. So that's the biggest change. Next, let's talk about apps. So here, I'll talk about some of the apps that I removed since my one year update. Organic Maps, you can see is no longer here. I realized that I don't really use maps. Since the one year update, maybe I used Organic Maps once or twice, maybe, in the last five months. So I removed that, and then in order for Organic Maps to have text-to-speech so that it could say the directions when you're driving, I did have RH Voice on here as well, um, so that is gone as well. But if you need that functionality, if you need a Maps app on your phone, Organic Maps and RH Voice, those are the two that you'll need to download. So yeah, so those two are gone. Um, what else is gone? Oh, Signal's gone. That's another app on my iPhone that I put I put Signal because my number is tied to my Signal account. So all of my family, I text through Signal except my clients on iMessage for my iOS device. I managed to get most of my family onto Signal, which is great. On here, I actually changed to Session. So I, I'm trying that out right now. Let's go into Session. Here I have a... Um, I guess a, a session or a chat with my wife. That's the only person who I, I put session on her phone just to kind of try it out. And it is actually amazing. The account creation process is super simple. You literally open the app, you hit, I think it's, I don't know what it's called exactly, but you hit create an account and it gives you a random session ID that you then share with others who use session. They put that session ID in their phone and you just chat like normal. I've stayed away from Session because I read several articles about it being difficult, not difficult to use, but all of those extra steps of having to create a Session ID and then sharing that. But honestly, it was a super easy process and I actually wish that I started on Session rather than Signal and got all of my family on Session. But all of my family is now on Signal. I'm not gonna make them move again. <laughs> Maybe I'll wait a couple years or something to move, but um, 
but yeah, so on here, I chat with my wife. If I have this phone next to me, I chat with my wife through session. So here, I'm gonna try to blur out the session ID. All the session ID is, is just a string of numbers and letters that you share with the person. They put that session ID in and you guys can chat together. What is cool about session is that it routes your chats similar to like a Tor network. Um, it routes it from your device to an entry node, to another node, then to a final node before it makes it, makes it to um, the other person's device. So it's really cool. Here on the top, it says session hides your IP by bouncing your messages through several service nodes in sessions decentralized network. And these nodes change as well. So if I come back into session tomorrow, right now I'm in US, Canada, and US then to the destination. Tomorrow it might say Germany, US, Canada. It might change. So these nodes change. I don't know what the frequency is, but it, it changes every so often. And I think that is all like the new stuff. So I still, still use Aegis. AntennaPod is for podcasts. Um, Aurora Store, downloading apps if you don't want to use the Google Play Store. Collabora Office, use that to open Word documents, Excel files. Forecasty is a weather app. Keypass DX, I'm, I'm loving Keypass DX. It's, it's awesome. I like having an offline password manager. Uh, new pipe for YouTube videos. And yeah, so that's my main profile. Those are really the changes there. Let's jump into another profile. Let's go to our social media profile, exactly the same as last time, Facebook, Messenger, LinkedIn. And I have these, you know, to communicate with those that I'm, that I'm just friends on Facebook. Don't really use it too often. And it's actually really nice separating your social media apps in a separate profile. Because if these apps are in your normal profile, these apps are constantly sending out information even when you're not opening the app or using the app. It's crazy. Um, if you have a pie hole or something and you're watching the DNS requests, you can see Facebook every so often pinging out. But if you have your apps in a separate profile, what you can do is hold down the power button, end your session of that profile, it takes you back to the owner profile. Now you're back to your owner profile and your social media profile is completely locked. It's not running, it's in a rest state. Um, so those apps in that profile are not sending any data. So for me, I check my social media maybe about once a week. Um, so that's really the only time my phone is pinging out to social media. Other than that, it's in a separate profile not sending any requests. So that's awesome and what's great about having profiles. Let's jump to banking. So with banking, this is something new. As you can see, I do have Chase Bank back on here. In my one year update, I believe I did not have Chase because I mentioned that it didn't work or maybe I had it, but it, it never really worked. So after that one year update, I deleted Chase. I didn't use it for a long time, but then I decided to install it again in my banking profile and tried various things to make it work. One thing that made it work, uh, if you go long press Chase, go to app info and scroll down. Here, exploit protection compatibility mode. That is typically off by default but if I turn it on and then I go into the app and try to log in, it took me right into my account, the app worked perfectly and I had no issues. As you can see here, permissions, I do have the camera permission on as well. And I can confirm, this is also a, a question I get all the time for my banking apps, both Ally and Chase, I can do mobile check deposits. So I can confirm, I can do mobile check deposits. So so yeah, so that's the only change. I'm using Chase again in the banking. So let me go into the Chase app just to show that it works. I'm gonna to try to blur out as much as possible. Okay, I logged in. Here's the home screen for Chase. You can see that I am in the account. 
So once I'm done working in my banking profile, again, all I need to do is hold down power, end my session, and all of the apps in that banking profile are at rest. They're not communicating. So next profile, let's jump to work. Now for my work, I am required to have True You. This is an authentication service. It's kind of like a two-factor authentication. Whenever I log in with my company enterprise email, it's going to ask me, please open the True You app to authenticate. So I need to open this app, authenticate, and then it lets me into my account. Zoom, I maybe used Zoom once since my one year update, but I just have it in here just in case I'm on the road and I need to jump. I have, there's an emergency I need to do, need to jump on a work call. That's pretty much my work profile. If I start traveling more for work, I might have to put some of my work apps in here. But even if I do put those on, I still feel pretty good about having it separated from my main profile. All right, and lastly, I have been experimenting with a Google profile. Um, so let's jump into Google. And here you can see I have YouTube Studio, Google Voice, and YouTube. And in this particular profile, if I swipe down, I am using the Google Play Services Sandbox. You can see here, Sandbox Google Play is running. And if I scroll up, you can see some additional apps here. I've downloaded all of those apps from the Play Store and I'm logged into my YouTube Google account. I can pull up my channel. I can pull up YouTube Studio. I can send comments from YouTube Studio. And so far it's been running smooth. So no complaints here. Um, again, it's in a separate profile, even though I'm running Google Play services, completely separated. I can do all my YouTube stuff here now, maybe spend, you know, a couple minutes doing that. And after my couple minutes per day, all I do, and I'm saying this over and over because it's, <laughs> I think it's super powerful, um, Android slash Graphene OS having this, being able to end the session. Unlike my iOS device, YouTube Studio, YouTube was always on that device, running on your main profile, constantly pinging out. So if you have PyO, you can see these requests always pinging out randomly, like to youtube.com, to google.com. But in the case with Graphene OS, I just spend a couple minutes a day or every other day on these other profiles, but 98% of the time, those profiles are at rest and I am running mainly, if you look at this, mainly all open source um, apps. The only proprietary one would probably be Traveling Mailbox here. But that's my 17 month update. Again, sorry for the absence from YouTube, but um, hopefully I can start making videos again. As always, let me know if you have any questions. I'll do my best to respond. And thank you for watching.